welcome to this video. I have a very special guest with me today, my husband, and we are going to be talking about Willa's birth story. First, we're going to talk about all the baby prep that we did before we knew that there was a pandemic happening. And then we'll talk about when the pandemic hit New York City and what sort of our lives looked like at that point when I was very heavily pregnant. Then we're gonna talk about the day of the birth and then a little bit about postpartum. So now we're talking about all of the prep that we did for our baby um, when we thought it was just going to be a normal life and without COVID. So we did all the birth classes, all the birth education, all the baby yoga. You went, Mark was going to the partner meetups. Partner meetups. We bought everything that could be bought. <laughs> we got her room ready. We didn't they even get her room ready yet though. Remember we had, it was like, we had all the packages coming to get the room oh, ready. Oh, that's right. Like we were like, okay, the last two months we will make the room. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what else did we do? We, what are all the like, why don't you talk about the support that we had planned? We got a baby nurse lined up. We lined up a doula for Christine. And then we had our families planned to come visit us a few months after the birth to provide a little bit of extra support. Our doula is also a chef, so she was meant to make all of our food for us. Even though, and we read the, the whole, well, Mark read the whole of the first 40 days. Mm -hmm. um, Why Love Matters. Why Love Matters. The pregnancy books. Yeah, what else did we read? I think that was it. But what did you find useful Michael about the Lewis's first 40 book. days specifically? Because you read that like front to back. Yeah, probably just an understanding of the importance that nutrition plays for your recovery and combined with just being off your feet and the, you know, what your body's actually has gone through and what needs to go through to get you out of the other side, mm -hmm. just in terms of it's obviously a life changing, a life changing event, not just with the baby, but physically it's draining, like you have to restore all of the nutrients that your body's just shed and given to another human and all the while while you're trying to do that with a, with a baby it's you know I think the nutritional element was something I had probably underestimated the importance of going in. And it was great for you to read it and not just me. Yeah because ultimately you know you, me being the one who's meant to be you know responsible for yeah. helping make the teas and the food and understanding yeah. what you're going to eat and kind of you know you've got enough going on and just trying to create a little framework and structure around And it. did we make those recipes together? No, I made them. No, nice no, before, no, before, didn't we like make them together and freeze them? Uh, we might, you might have showed me how to do it the first time. You made them? Yeah. No, I made them actually. The one thing that we did together, but it wasn't you, it was your mom, was the, uh, what was the Korean seaweed dish? Oh yeah, we went, when we went home. Yeah. So we went home that. for, um, like the last visit home of before, before my like last before travel you could date. Not travel anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. For for pregnancy, we went home to visit our family. Um, little did we know we were not going to see them for like ever after that because of the pandemic. Um, so it's great that we went home. But basically, my mom gave both of us a cooking lesson in this like really amazing. Korean seaweed soup that like everybody eats after they give birth. It's like supposed to be really really good. Um, I can do. I can okay. provide the recipe. Miyakuk. Thank you. Miyakuk. And I also really want to go and show the notes that Mark made for the first forty days. Can I go get it quickly? Why hello there. <laughs> okay, so this is the book um, that we've been talking about. Um, in depth a little bit, but I just love that Mark made these notes, which I feel like I should like frame or something because they're so cute. Do you want to talk about how you, why, what you made? This book has a lot of different recipes for stews and soups, and it's all about warming and and you know high density nutrient dishes and that are yeah. obviously more liquid based as you know post kind of delivery, just wanted to make sure digestion's easy and that the body's not going through a lot of effort, but there's a lot of content in this book. And so 
Um, I found it useful and, and the way the book is structured is that for the first week you should focus on these dishes, the next week you should focus on a different set of dishes that have a little bit more um, like digestive complexity and then and then you know later on yeah like the, the first, first days are days, like broths like and teas broth and tea that I so, couldn't even like I was like choking down and and the book sort of like jumps jumps around a little bit so I just kind of organized you know days one to seven um, which page to reference kind of page some of the 84. key some of the key notes uh, and then it's and then that's it that. really give it to me. <laughs> This will be helpful for the, and then and then we had a, a pretty specific schedule. So April April 29th we had wet teas, bone broths, timing, um, what to prepare for the next day, and we had that for the first week just because um, everything is just so chaotic. Yeah, this is great. So like April 29th, that's when she was born. Nettle and fennel tea times two, bone broth times two, pure synergy materials plus lots of water. Prepare. And then it's like. Then go home, prepare for the next day. Nettle and fennel tea. Take seaweed soup out of freezer. Put roasting pan underneath in fridge. <laughs> um, bone broth. Anyways, I just love it. It's so good. It helps because there's enough. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Yay! And that will be soup. Now it's all done for baby number two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we also, I think, the main point of just like talking about what we did pre-pandemic prep is just like so different because it all kind of went out the window, um, most yeah. of it. Yeah, everyone said that it would. Everyone said like your birth plan, great to have one, but don't expect to keep it. Which is so true. Every single yeah. birth, like of all of the births we've ever known, yeah. except for one has really not gone to plan, um, yeah. including ours did not go to plan. Ours didn't, we didn't plan for the <laughs> pandemic at all. We probably should have seen that coming. <laughs> yeah, it's really silly of us. Yeah. Very obvious in hindsight. <laughs> okay, so yeah, anyways, the whole I think the whole point of this is that like we had all of this support ready, lined up, ready to go. Um, no, matter. we planned everything to a T, including where Goose was gonna go for the first two weeks post birth, then dog walking more frequently, and on weekends, you know, had this all this master logistics plan of who would be with us when. When they would leave, we'd have a bit of overlap in terms of family and- To the point where was, we like went yeah. to birth classes and stuff, we were people smug. would be yeah. like, yeah, a little too smug. <laughs> <laughs> and also like everyone would like ask about our plans and we would tell them and they'd be like, uh, yeah, we've, I think the, the person leading the birth class was like, I've never known a more prepared couple <laughs> for like a birth, a baby ever. Um, anyway, so that's how we were treating the whole pregnancy and planning and, you know, prep for baby. Yeah. And we were really on track to it being super smooth. Until March 11th? Or 11, 13, 11, 12, 13 was yeah. like the <laughs> Oh, no, no one likes that one. That's a good... Nobody does in this room. That was new. <laughs> Bun -da -da. I, did, I did that. Cool. Okay. So that's the end of part one of... Sorry. <laughs> Just say it. You <laughs> say, it. say it. Yeah, you say it. So that's the end of part one of our birth story. Stay uh, told her that. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. Join us in part two to hear more. Join. <laughs> Motion. Mark. You know. This. That's the end of part one of our birth story. <laughs> Join us for part two for more. Okay. Shush.